time is it 11 o'clock hi everyone this is chicho welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream today is september 22nd the second day of fall 2020 and it's 11 a.m pdt pst pacific west coast uh, time canada west coast of the united states and canada and we're doing our math uh, drop in tutoring session number 59 let's do some mathematics related mainly to high school mathematics uh, we do go lower as well to elementary and we do a little bit above uh, post-secondary we're usually trying to stay away from calculus unless it's like really intro calculus which i'm slowly getting into a uh, little bit of stats as well is okay not too hardcore and computer experimentations i try to stay away from personally it's not my forte okay aside from that uh welcome to another live stream uh, while we wait for notifications to go out i'm just gonna let you know who i am what this is all about i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o the foundation of what i'm doing is mathematics this is it this is the core of what i'm building everything else up on right hello young polax how are you doing welcome to another live stream and i do sort of provide my thesis on or my vision on my patreon page in the front page i guess and you can follow the work there and if you think this is a worthwhile project to put your resources in put your funds in patreon is a fantastic way to support this project i don't put anything behind paywalls everything's creative commons share and share alike you can follow the work and after a while if you come to the conclusion that this is worth supporting patreon is it okay we are live streaming this on twitch worth cornet coronet how are you doing welcome to another live stream holden who's how are you doing hello hello and we are live streaming this on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in the chat as you see it coming up here twitch is where you want to be at and for those of you who've been supporting this work through twitch by subscribing by donating by bits by dropping in these tutoring uh, these live stream sessions really if it's math or not related to math thank you very much for the support and for those of you who've been supporting this work through patreon it is mainly because of your support that we're able to continue this work and grow slowly oh god how are you doing <laughs> I do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on LO Minds VK Parlor, Gab, and Twitter for now. Okay. You can follow the work there. Uh, I do share additional content there, and all the links will be in the description of the video once it's loaded to BitChute and YouTube, and it will be loaded on both. And we have a little bot which Elder God just shared on our chat on Discord, where if you do exclamation mark social and we'll give you our all of our almost all of our social uh links uh if you are on those platforms felix how are you doing what's up chicho what's uh how's your day week been days going fantastic check this out i got up this morning yesterday i went cornelian cherry picking and this morning i get up early <laughs> this morning i made some cornelian cherry jam rock and roll this is this is a delicacy if there's any iranians armenians out there that see this they'd be knocking on my door chicho give us some of that cornelian cherry fantastic i just made it this morning and i'm sampling it and it's really good i picked um i went for two rounds uh last week or uh, yeah a week and a half ago or so i picked about uh, three pounds that I turned into liqueur, Cornelian cherry liqueur, phenomenal. And yesterday I went and picked another eight pounds of Cornelian cherries. It's the last time the harvest is done, it's getting ripe. And I turned that into jam this morning. So very happy about it. Very happy about it. Lonely Peggy, how are you doing? Chicho, good to see you. As always, how's the temperature? The temperature's doing fantastic. Plants are loving it. Buds are coming in, getting bigger thorn hello hello hey chicho got my notification awesome welcome welcome to another live stream thorn thanks for dropping in two in a row we got five more to go after this one this week right uncharted ace hey chicho hope you and chat are well 
Uh, been a long time since I caught a stream. Yeah, I tried it is. You've been busy, I hope, in a good way, right? Felix, that looks so good. Never had Cornelian cherries before. Are they similar to? No, they're not. They're very tart and they have a medicinal feel to them. Like if you get tummy ache and if you get flu or something in uh, Iran, Armenian, you. They sort of, you know, this is something that if you have, if you can get access to it, you grab and you eat and it's got seeds in it. And it's good for the tummy. Okay. Very unique taste. It's got a tart taste to it. Okay. And these are the seeds. The dolphin. Hi, Chicho. Good to see you. Good to see you too as well, dolphin. Always good to see a dolphin. So it's really delicious okay Sean yo 71 hello hello Cheryl how are you doing hi all I'm glad uh, OT is still warm there uh, OT temperature OT uh, we had forest uh, frost you had frost yesterday Cheryl what I can't remember having frost this early frost already man I hope we don't get frost here if we do we gotta i gotta bring some plants in i gotta make room to bring some plants in frost that's too early felix not sure if i can pick them up here in the uk but i'll look around uh definitely sound look good yeah for sure uh persian stores might have the jams i doubt it if you can get fresh cornelian cherries i really doubt it spider-man how are you doing spider-man i got a comic book haul that came in is waiting at the post office I might cut the stream short today a little bit okay maybe an hour and a half hour and 45 minutes that'll give me time to go grab the comic book haul and bring it here and if I can do that uh, I might do an unannounced comic book haul live stream before the video game live stream tomorrow or later on this week I gotta do it in the next couple of days because I want to leave uh, feedback for the seller diet dog hello is it me uh is it me you're looking for <laughs> is it me you're looking oh that's, a, that's from a song i forget what it is young polas i'm sad i missed the current event stream because it was at four in the morning for me here and i have school luckily i have the the, the awesome video on demand vod and i will upload that video on bit most likely tomorrow i have another thing i want to upload to bit today if I get the chance and then tomorrow I'll have the current events live stream up tomorrow it was a fantastic stream yesterday by the way and we're USD zone 7 it's weird for sure that's crazy Cheryl this is too early for frost man I my some of my plants are the buds are in uh, I want them to get bigger I hope we don't get hit with frost Felix video game live stream been waiting for this for ages what games are you playing I'm not playing any games I'm gonna show you the video games I have that have made it with me this far since the 1980s so it's basically my video game collection um, and they're all in boxes they're it's just random just everywhere I picked up I've you know from the 1980s I picked up some in the 1990s I believe uh, pick some up in the 2000s pick some up 2010s uh, and all that jazz right yes I made live stream finally Megan cupcake how are you doing I like your name Skellig how are you doing how are we doing Chicho doing good doing good eating Cornelian cherry jam and drinking dark Persian black tea life is sweet well the tea is not sweet but the cornelian cherries are sweet <laughs> for live streams where we don't have any visuals like the way we do right now we record a lapel mic on that storm recorder and upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o as podcast for those that want to listen to the live stream open discussions and audio format and they should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify the audio for this it will not be loaded onto soundcloud right now anyway maybe when i retire and i can do 
a lot more back-end work i'll grab the audio from this and load it up as well we'll see who knows a couple of decades from now and this video live stream will be uploaded to youtube and bitshoot i can't see us talking about anything that the youtube censorship will knock us for so it's mathematic streams math content will almost always i don't think we've done one that we haven't uploaded to youtube yet we might because there's some touchy subjects that require a little bit of mathematical logic to kick in there for us to get a better perspective of what's going on but we haven't done any of those yet so all the math content will be uploaded to youtube and everything goes on bitshoot and if you are on youtube and bitshoot you can support this work by subscribing following liking sharing and if you're on youtube you can support this work by joining youtube membership somewhere here there's a button there that you can join youtube membership aside from that gang welcome to another math stream we're going to do anywhere between two to four of these a month to help people out with uh, mathematics mainly high school mathematics and elementary school mathematics if it comes up and a little post-secondary if we can manage it and there are times that there are people here that know uh, drop in our math tutoring sessions that know mathematics better than I do and on our discord page people have been helping each other out okay davish hello hello hey chicho so we're doing some math today we're doing some math today and physics is also on uh, the table as well audio with animation i see it in 2040 <laughs> maybe it would be fun it would be fun elder young that would be crazy cool eh? that would be crazy cool luma how are you doing how are you chicho doing well thank you very much here for the math awesome montreal player by the way gang no matter what we're talking about you got math questions drop them we'll deal with it math supersedes everything else and please remember politics on politics streams finance streams and whatnot no politics on the math streams please okay uh unless there's a mathematical analysis we can do on it but we would have to get confirmation on the numbers and whatnot so no matter what we're talking about uh if you have questions regarding mathematics just let us know what they are and we'll deal with them i'm uh, garbage at math but i know that what i want to get into i need to uh, be good at math uh M megan what do you want to get into and which part of math it's like when you say i'm garbage at math it's like saying i'm garbage at english because mathematics is just a language right so pretty sure you're not garbage at english because it doesn't make sense the sentence just doesn't make sense you either know language know it a little bit know it well know it really well so what level are you in regards to knowing the language of mathematics are you just beginning do you just need to learn the alphabet like abc's shadow frat uh franox 21 thank you very much for the bits 10 what is 2 times 69 138 did i get it <laughs> 2 times 69 is a couple of couples having a good time felix could you explain how to find points of intersection of two straight lines with um simultaneous equations for sure let's do it oh my god 138 <laughs> i love it by the way this the the camera because it's a whiteboard will go in and out of focus apologies if it goes out of focus um if i notice it i'll try to bring it back focus with doing my hands <laughs> yay <laughs> shadow like says again thanks for the bit um and if not it will come into focus okay now what felix is asking for is some something called systems of linear equations right so just imagine this right just short little background if i ask you to solve something let's say i ask you to go solve so i say solve the following equation 2x plus 5 is equal to 7 right let's make it 17 right so if i say solve this you go oh okay you gotta isolate the x that's what solving means solving means get x by itself or get the variable by itself right skillet chicho could you uh, go into trigonometry too sure let's put it up here trig trig what level of trig uh skillet are we talking about uh, 
grade 12 trig or grade 8 trig like right angle triangles Pythagorean theorem or functions trigonometric functions right um, Megan I'm bad at math then I need to know physics level math because I'm interested in astrophysics space okay cool hey spider-man Megan says uh, Megan let's deal with your thing so you want to go into astrophysics so I'm gonna put a little note here physics I'm just gonna put physics here so we deal with it all right physics so we've got a couple other topics that we're going to talk about after we talk about systems of linear equations solving two lines right just starting out so basic so basic okay done deal uh, with the trick okay now consider this always keep this in mind by the way gang in mathematics there's two types of questions really that you get when you're starting out mathematics in high school and stuff like this one of them is to simplify simplify and the other one is to solve right simplify means crunch 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 right crunch 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 until you reduce it so for example simplify could be this four over six simplify this fraction well you can reduce this fraction so simplify also means reduce so four over six is two over three that's simplifying they could say simplify this 2x plus 4 minus 3x plus 7 and this is more combining like terms right so you're going to reduce this thing and 2x minus 3x is negative x 4 plus 7 is plus 11 right so simplify means reduce also means combine like terms right simplify could mean 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 1 this is expanding right so simplify could also mean expand right and this you multiply this by this this by this this by this this by this so 6x squared minus 2x plus 3x minus 1 and then you combine the like terms you get 6x squared plus x minus 1 right so simplify basically means crunch 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 reduce it to its simplest form okay that's what simplify means solve means get the variable by itself and when they say solve this has an equal sign in the question so this would be solving because in the question that they're giving you there's an equal sign so solving basically means get the variable by itself which basically means in most cases we use x to solve something already lost on three uh, that's like ancient Greek uh, don't worry about this I'll explain this I'm just giving examples of what's going on this is just multiplying a binomial by a binomial Megan so I, you know you could go on and get way more complicated stuff but we're not going to I'm just giving examples of simplify could mean multiple things and all those multiple things mean explain it more simply the simplest way you can possibly explain something that's what simplify means solving means get the variable by itself and usually a lot of times we use x as the variable as the placeholder for something that varies that's why they call it variable and when you're solving for something usually you get x or w or y or z or whatever it might be x equaling something that's what solving means right so keep this in mind now that said I could give you one equation right just one simple equation here and say solve for this what does solving mean it means get x by itself right okay so to get x by itself you got to undo what's being done to it so what you do is you grab this guy bring it over here so line up your equal sign you're going to get 2x on this side this becomes 17 minus 5 line up your equal sign you got 2x is equal to 12 and then divide by 2 divide by 2 so x is equal to 6. congratulations you just solved for x right so if you plug in x over here to uh, if you plug in 6 for x over here you can check by the way check right you go left side this is the left side of the equation left side of the equation and this is the right side of the equation right 
If you go the left side of the equation is 2x plus 5, and the right side of the equation is 17, and you're going to check for x is equal to 6 to see if this works, you just substitute 6 in for x, right? So you're going to get 2 times 6 plus 5. 2 times 6 is 12, plus 5 is 17. Oh, look, the left side is 17 and the right side is 17. This is a valid solution. Right on. That works. Okay? That's what solving is when you get one equation, right? What Felix was asking, I believe it was Felix has asked it. Felix, could you explain? Yeah. So Felix was asking is, can we solve... Here, I'll read the question again. Could you explain how to find points of intersection of two straight lines with simultaneous equations, right? Now, simultaneous equations we'll leave alone. So basically, the question is, well, not leave alone, but we'll talk about it, but it doesn't need to be simultaneous equations, right? Could you explain how to find points of intersection of two straight lines? And what that means is this. This is this question. You could get another question saying, solve for the following system of linear equations, for the following system of equations, or for the following two lines, meaning find a point of intersection if there is one. So they could give you this, solve for the following two equations combined. Y is equal to three X minus one, and Y is equal to negative two over three X plus four. Right. So when they say solve for this system, for this system, right? And system means more than one thing, right? Zain Muhammad 345. Hi, sir. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Zain, welcome to a live stream, right? So when they say solve for the system of equations, Okay, I mean, you're 11 in England. Nice. When they say solve for the system of equations, what we have right now is two variables. Remember, solving for something means get the variable by itself. If we're trying to solve for the system, there is in this system an X and a Y. So we have two unknowns. Over here, we only had one unknown. Rule in mathematics. If you have one unknown, you need one equation to solve it. If you have two unknowns, you need two equations to solve it. If you have three unknowns, you need three equations to solve it. Four unknowns, four equations to solve it, and so on and so forth, right? That's things backwards than that. I have problems, so I go special needs high school. Okay, Zin. So right now we have two unknown variables, X and a Y, right? So we need these two equations to be able to solve both for the x and the y now if i gave you this i gave you only one of them and i said solve for this equation you couldn't solve for it because there is only one equation and two unknowns right you would need the second equation there is a second equation okay now there are two ways that you can solve this equation let's do a graph of it first so you understand what's at play here okay I have a math, math problem someone gave me to try and solve, but it literally looks like alien language to me. Could I put it in Discord? For sure, Megan. And after we do this, this, and this, uh, you can give it to us, and maybe we could do it right now if we've got time, right? I'm in Canada, Zane. Do you know how to do this? If you do, fantastic. Take a look at this. I'm going to give you a quick little review rundown on it. If you don't, pay attention pretty important okay take a look at this thing there's two ways to solve for this right now the first thing you want to do is graph it and both of these graph lines there's x to the power of 1 y to the power of 1 we know it's a linear equation a line okay so first of all let's graph this here very general we're not going to to scale we're not going to be uh, be very accurate with the graph. We just want to get an idea of what it looks like, right? To graph a line, we're going to use the format y equals mx plus b, right? Let's draw a line here. Do a little break. Right? 
This is one thing I do to separate different problems, right? So we know the second problem starts here. So we're going to use y equals mx plus b. y is equal to mx plus b. For those of you that know this, that's the general equation of a line. The b represents the y-intercept. The m is the slope of the graph. Awesome, Megan. Okay. So if you're going to graph these guys, you go to the y-intercept first. The sign in front of the number goes with the number, negative 1. And then you do the slope. The slope is rise over 1. Okay. 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. So there is line 1. Okay, and always a good idea if you're solving these systems of linear equations, graph it quickly if you want, just to get a visual so you know approximately in which quadrant the answer is going to be and if there is going to be a solution. Okay, math equation to understand. Oh, you meant other girl, you meant I, I meant I reverse engineer math question to understand it better, and that's a great way to do it. Loon, Luma. Which fork of mathematics do you think is best to learn to use in day-to-day -day situations? Uh, statistics. Statistics is probably the most important branch of mathematics in everyday life. Uh, we graph this one. That's equation number one. Equation number two, y-intercept is four. One, two, three, four. And then from the y-intercept, you do the slope. Negative two over three. One, two, one, two, three. Here's equation number two. Okay. This tells us that this line intersects this line, which is exactly what they want as the answer. When they ask you a question to solve for a system of equations, they're asking you to find out where the two lines cross or two graphs cross, if they cross at all. By graphing it quickly, we figure out that, oh, yeah, there is a solution right here, x and y. What that means is this point right here where both lines cross each other, that x and y works for this equation and works for this equation. That point right there exists on both this line and this line. That's what they mean when they say solve for a system of linear equations or solve for a system of equations. Okay. Now, before we go solving for this algebraically, keep this in mind. There's three things that can happen. Okay. When you're solving for systems of linear equations, one of the ways I was taught taught to find the y-intercept was to put both equations in the form y equals mx plus b then make them equal to each other yes since they are both y and that doesn't find you the y-intercept that finds you the y where they cross the y-intercept as soon as you put them in the form of y equals mx plus b the y-intercept is your b okay solve for x then substitute the x value back in one of the equations to solve for the y yes not y sub sorry point of intersection yeah felix point of intersection she chose fragana with the european heritage yeah check this out so that's what we want to find right so at this point if we plug in this x here it's going to give us this y which is the same as that if we plug in this x here it's going to give us the same y as well right two ways to solve for this one of them is substitution the other one is elimination now before we get into solving for this keep this in mind as soon as you see system of linear equations there's three things that can happen okay and if you think about this you'll appreciate what it is right there is one graph i'm going to draw all three systems here three ways that this can work out if i give you two lines to say solve for them the two lines might cross right and give you a point that exists on both lines. The only way this will happen is they, if they have different slopes, different M, right? So the only way this happens is different slope. Boop. The other thing that can happen is the two lines might be parallel and they might have different Y intercept. So their M's might be the same, but their B's might be different. 
If that happens, then the two lines are parallel because they have the same slope and there will be no solution. So this has one solution. This has no solutions, no solution. And the way this will happen is if you have same slope M and different B. Okay. So as soon as you write them in term of y equals mx plus b, we saw that they had different slopes. So we would have known that it was case one where there was going to be a solution, right? The third thing that can happen is if they have the same m, same slope, and the same y-intercept. Well, if they have the same slope and the same y-intercept, they're just the same line, right? So they're on top of each other. So this would be line one and this would be line two right what that means is there's an infinite number of solutions because there's an infinite number of points that exist both on equation one and on equation two right so this happens there's infinite infinite solutions and this happens when they have the same slope same m and same y-intercept right b keep this in mind this knowledge and this knowledge y equals mx plus b is sort of what you need as a precursor before you try to solve this algebraically because it gives you a lot of information regarding your problem right now now that we know this we know that there is a solution let's solve for it because if there was no solution you wouldn't even bother trying to solve for this you would say no solution it means they don't cross if there's an infinite number of solution if they you rewrite it and it has the same slope and the same y-intercept you would say oh there's an infinite number of solutions so you don't even have to do the work that's why it's an important it's important to know all these three possibilities right because it could save you a lot of time. You don't have to go and do a whole ton of work to find out that there is no solution because all you gotta do is look at the slopes, right? Now there's two ways to solve for this. I love cute girl toes. How are you doing? I wish I didn't piss off my teachers sometimes. <laughs> Stop pissing off your teachers gang. Okay, most of them are trying their damnedest to get this information across, right? Two ways of solving for this. One is called substitution. Substitution. The other one's called elimination. Elimination. Okay. Now I'm gonna to try to fit it all in here. Okay. Might be tricky. If it gets too crunched up, we're gonna go back up here. Okay. Brackets, observation, divide, multiplication, addition, <laughs> subtraction. Take a look at this thing. Substitution is this. Set one y equal to the other y, right? If you write it in terms of y equals mx plus b, you can substitute this y for this y because they're the same y, right? So what you end up doing is you set y1 equal to y2 because what you're trying to do is find the same y, right? I should write this bigger so you see it. Let's write this. This point here is x and y right so at this point at this point y1 will equal y2 and if you're trying to find that point then just set y1 equal to y2 force it to be that thing right i don't know about never uh, changing i heard they're going to come out with some new numbers soon <laughs> hope they have a good time with it so you're gonna set y1 equal to y2, right? Well, what's one y, what's y1 equal to? y1 equals this, 3x minus one. So all you do, you go 3x minus one equal to, what's y2? y2 is two over three x plus four. Negative two over three x plus four, right? For the next little bit, I'm turning off chat gang. Watch this. <laughs> boop, boop. 
I'm just taking chat off the video so you can pay attention to this, right? So right now we set y1 equal to y2. Well, all we got to do now is this is one equation with one variable. So all we got to do is solve for x. Solve for x, i.e. get x by itself, right? So what we ended up doing by doing substitution, we took two equations with two variables, got rid of one of the variables by substituting in their expressions for each other, right? So we combine two equations with two variables to create one equation with one variable. Cool. So all we've got to do now is just solve for x. The best way to solve for this, if you have a fraction and equation, get rid of your denominators. Multiply by the common denominator. The common denominator here is 3. So I'm going to multiply the whole equation by 3. This becomes 9x minus 3 is equal to negative 2 over 3 times 3. The 3s kill each other. becomes negative 2x plus 12. So 3 multiplies every term here. And then you're going to get x by itself. So you're going to grab negative 2x, bring it over, grab the 3, bring it over there. This becomes plus 2x. 9x plus 2x is 11x. And 3 comes over, negative 3 comes over, becomes plus 3. So this becomes 15. And then you divide by 11, divide by 11. So x is equal to 15 over 11. You just found the x where they cross each other. Okay. Elder God, thanks for timing out. Zane, I think he was stuck in a loop. <laughs> for sure elder god i would have called it to tell you the truth mr gaming youtube our youtube channel is this hey that didn't work out mr gaming i have a test and i need help is there a way i can share it or email it the test well we're not going to do the test for you that's for sure however we've got a ton of videos on our youtube channel where you can go in there and find certain appropriate topics uh, a lot of stuff you can go to our discord and ask question if you need help with something right on charter days do we have a troll just come back it was a troll for sure <laughs> or uh he wasn't doing too well I do multiply three both sides. We multiply toes. This is the this is one way to do equations. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to do some of the calculations here. Check this out. Right. The whole point. One of the things anyway, mathematicians like to do is make life easy. Right. You want to simplify things as quickly as and with as little brain power as possible. Right. So watch this. What if I give you an equation, right? First of all, ask most, pe most people what they don't like about mathematics, what part of mathematics they don't like. They say fractions, okay? I'll show it to you, Toes. You choose the three because it was a very, very, no, it wasn't a variable, it was a common denominator. So take a look at this thing. By the way, I'm taking little tangents here and there to clarify things, right? Keep in mind, we solve for x in this equation, right? We solve for the x. We still need to find a y, right? So we're not done this yet. But to answer this question here, why we multiply by 3, what if I gave this to you? 1 over 2x plus 3 over 4x is equal to 7 over 2 or 7 over here. 7 over 6 minus... 1 over 3x, right? I said solve this equation, right? You'd be like, okay, we got lots of fractions here, and I don't want to deal with fractions, right? Fractions add a little bit of more difficulty because you got to find a common denominator. You can combine these guys, but you got to do common denominator and all that jazz, right? So as a general rule, to simplify the solving process, right? This is solve. To simplify your algebra, 
If you get fractions in an equation, multiply the whole fraction by the common denominator. Make sure it's an equation, not an expression. An equation meaning there's an equal sign in the equation. And the reason you're able to do this is because you can do anything to one side as long as you do it to the other side, right? It's a teeter-totter, the equal sign, right? Equality. Whatever you do on one side, you got to do it to the other side. So what I do is, look at this, go 2, 4, 6, 3. The common denominator between 2, 4, 6, and 3 is 12. So I'm going to multiply the whole equation by 12. Right? So multiply the whole equation by 12. 1 over 2 times 12. 2 reduces 12 down to 6, so it's really just 6 multiplying this. This becomes 6x. 4 goes into 12 3 times, so it's just 3 multiplying this, plus 9x. 6 goes into 12 twice, so it's really just 2 multiplying this, that's 14. 3 goes into 12 4 times, so it's really just 4 multiplying this, 4x. Wow, this is a lot easier to deal with. Holy camoles, right? Chat off is good for visual clarity. Awesome, Elder God. We're going to keep it off for now. Okay, I left, then came back. Now I don't know what's going on. And Megan, here is the kicker. Gang, if you're sitting in math class, really, if you're sitting in math class, try to stay focused. When you're doing a problem, try to stay focused. Because mathematics is a layered process, right? You don't want to miss any simple concepts that all of a sudden throw you off. Math for like two years the more. Uh, Megan, don't worry, it'll make more sense. Seriously, when we start doing physics, it, uh, if you want to deal with physics, uh, it's just algebra, you'll see. Seriously, it's bad, I was so into it. Then I had to leave for a second. Okay, this, I'm just giving an example of how to deal with equations where there's fractions, which basically, most people don't like fractions, right? So for example, let's assume you get this question, they tell you without the 12 up there, right? They tell you to solve for X. Well, simplify the equation, multiply the whole equation by the common denominator, and that gets rid of all your fractions. Now you don't have any fractions, easier to deal with. Nine X plus, uh, sorry, six X plus nine X is 15 X. This, you can't combine anything on either side. And then bring all the x's to one side, whoop, plus 4x. So that's 19x is equal to 14. Divide by 19, divide by 19. So x is equal to 14 over 19. Okay. That's the reason why we multiply by the common denominator. It makes the algebra a lot easier, right? Going back to our problem, we combine equation one and two in here. We set y1 equal to y2, came up with one equation with one variable, which means get x by itself, multiply by the common denominator, which was three to get rid of our fractions, got to here, solve for x. What we need to do now is find the y associated with the x. Because if you're on a Cartesian coordinate system on an x, y axis, you can't just have an x equaling something or a y equaling something unless it's a line if it's a point you need an x and a y they're married they go together right it's a map right you can't you can't find someone's address if they just give you the number or if they just give you the name of the street you need both the name of the street and the number of the house right that's your x and y coordinate okay so all we do since we found the x is equal to 15 over 11 we substitute this either into y1 or y2 so let's do the work here so you see it and then we'll do it using elimination okay so all we do now is sub into one or two they're gonna both give you gonna give you the same answer right so let's sub it into one if we sub it into one y is equal to three the x is 15 over 11 times 15 over 11 minus 1. So this is multiplying fractions, 3, which is just really 3 over 1, times 15 over 11 becomes 45 over 11 minus 1. And you just got to add these guys as a common denominator as 11. That becomes 45 minus 11 
multiply by 1 by 11 to give you 11. So you're going to multiply the top by 11, right? So 45 minus 11 is 34 over 11. That's your y. So the solution to the system of equations is 15 over 11 and 34 over 11. What does that mean? 15 over 11 is 1 and 4 elevenths, which is the coordinate here, right? 1 and 4 elevenths, and 34 or 11 is 3 and 1 elevenths. 3 and 1 elevenths. If you're simplifying, which is where this is, right? If this was 1, then that's 1 and 4 elevenths, and this was 1, 2, how did we do? My graph sucks. So it would be 1, 2, 3, and 1 11th, which is here. Okay. So we found the solution to the system of linear equations, which is really just find the coordinate where they intersect. Okay. So taking some notes to jog my memory. Seriously, I have. Uh, it's bad. I was into it then I no worries Megan by the way Megan once it starts clicking it will click I'm gonna turn chat on again okay uh, Cheryl Megan would you like us to post the question you shared in discord yeah what was the question you shared da, 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 da. Uh, I don't know but should we do trick so is that okay by the way oh we didn't do uh, elimination let me show you how elimination works Let's do it up here. Watch this. This was doing using substitution, right? This was substitution. Elimination means combine these equations in a way where you eliminate one of the variables, which is really what we did anyway. We eliminated one of the variables, but they like to when they teach you mathematics, they like to separate things, categorize things, give them English names to say, this is this, this is this, this is this, right? So it's just another method, a different direction where you could have got to the same solution, all right? So what you would do is say, okay, equation one is this. Equation one is y is equal to 3x minus 1. Equation two is y is equal to negative 2 over 3x plus 4. So what you can do is either add or subtract both these equations to kill them. Zane, are you back? Sir, I subscribed. Are you on YouTube and you got interesting videos, sir? They are really good. And when you do live streams, what days and what times? My schedule changes, Zane. I do shift work. I'm not your regular Twitch streamer where I have certain days and set times where I stream. I fit him in according to what my schedule allows me to do. Okay. And who timed me out? <laughs> Mod timed you out. <laughs> because we're talking about stuff. You should, instead of being, because you were talking about yourself a lot, right? Which is okay. But when a lesson's going on, you said you didn't know how to do this, right? Then you should have been paying attention to learn how to do this and if this was Greek to you if it didn't make sense you should pay attention anyway because by paying attention you might pick up a little bit of notes here and there that'll help you out later on to learn another process okay R really Zane mathematics it's not a linear learning thing mathematics basically occurs like evolution there's big steps in all of a sudden the thought process right all of a sudden there are aha moments where you just get it right and once you get it everything else makes sense it is zane it is powerful it is powerful okay it is powerful learn it really do it do it and i'm gonna turn off chat again boop, to explain elimination <laughs> watch this instead of setting this equation equal to this equation it, instead of setting y1 equal to y2 setting this equal to this let's get rid of the fractions first right what we could do by the way is 
just subtract equation two from equation one. Here, I'll show you two, two of them, right? So let's assume we're gonna use elimination. We're gonna subtract this equation from this equation. Draw your line and say you're gonna do subtraction, minus, right? My, subtract this from this. So y minus y gives you zero. 3x minus negative two over three. X. Let's do this on the side. 3x minus negative 2 over 3x. Simplify that, right? You're trying to crunch it. Common denominator is 3. This becomes 9x. Negative and the negative becomes positive plus 2x, which is equal to 11x over 3. So if you subtract 3x, go 3x minus negative 2 over 3x, you get 11x over 3 negative one minus four is negative five does that make sense so far right if you like you could put the question up sir sure that's the link okay let's take a look uh let me finish this and i'll take a look and i and i agree math is extremely powerful megan says you do a mind boggling amount of things with the power of math indeed right so all you got to do now is now you have one equation with one variable you just got to isolate x okay again we have a fraction i'm going to get rid of the fraction i'm going to multiply the whole equation by three zero times three is zero 11x over three times three is 11x negative five times three is negative 15 grab the negative 15 bring it over 15 is equal to 11x divide by 11 so x is equal to 15 over 11. what same answer right same answers down here 15 over 11 we just used a different process okay now watch this let's assume we didn't want to kill the y let's assume we wanted to kill x right eliminate x uh, where should we do this okay trig and physics i'm going to do it on the side here but remind me if i forget trig and physics we're going to deal with right watch this i'm going to rewrite both these equations actually i'm not going to rewrite it i'm going to multiply actually i'm not going to multiply anything with equation one equation one i'm going to keep the same here's equation one is y is equal to 3x minus 1. However, equation 2, again, I don't like fractions. I'm going to kill the 3. I'm going to kill the fraction. So I'm going to multiply the whole equation here by 3. Okay. So multiply by 3. So equation 2 becomes y times 3 is 3x is equal to negative 2 over 3x times 3 is negative 2x. And 4 times 3 is plus 12, right? Then we're going to try to eliminate x, okay? So here's how we're going to eliminate x. We're going to make them look the same, right? We want them to be the same value but opposite signs. That way, instead of subtracting the two equations, we're going to add the two equations. They're going to kill each other, right? So that's 3x. That's negative 2x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply equation 1 by 2. I'm going to multiply equation 2 by 3. This is what it's going to do, right? So equation 1, we multiply by 2. So this becomes 2y is equal to 6x minus 2. We've got to multiply the whole equation by 2, right? Equation 2, we're going to multiply by 3. So that becomes 9y is equal to negative 6x plus 36. Take a look at this thing. This is 6x, 6x, this is negative 6x. So if we just add these two equations together, the x's kill each other, right? So 2y plus 9y is 11y is equal to 6x takes out negative 6x. This becomes 34. What do you do now? Divide by 11, divide by 11. So y is equal to 34 over 11. What? That's the same answer as here. Right? We get the same answer, right? So your solution again is 11, 15, 15 over 11, which is your x, 
and 34 over 11 which is your y that is the point where the two lines intersect okay does that make sense the x's kill each other sorry i just had to say it <laughs> war of war of the roses right they just hate each other so much they kill each other done right let's do trick let me erase all this um and i think it was felix that asked that i hope this went through it well enough felix is there any questions you got uh on this okay is there any anything you want to know further regarding this before i take this down i'm going to take a sip of tea and if you're still here think about it or anybody else gang if you have any questions about this let me know right now we deal with it i clarify otherwise we're going to trade and then we're going to go to physics okay maybe we'll do physics first just drop something for megan because um what i want to do with physics just to make make something um hopefully it'll it'll be a little pointer megan to give you a little go oh that's all it is okay and who was it that asked about trig to uh, do, 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 who asked about trig and uh, whoever asked about trig are you okay with us doing physics first and then trig if not if you're on time crunch we'll do trick first and then go to go to physics okay you guys let me know which ones uh you're okay with as well as adding subtracting you could divide out two equations multiplying probably not yeah multiplying no it gives you more complicated but you can definitely divide out as well uh so you could go this equation divided by that equation the y kill each other y over y is one right so it gives you a ratio it's um yeah it's a little different go for it go for the physics first oh okay yeah that's right uh skilly so physics first done deal let's do physics i'm taking this guy down oh yeah there was a link that cheryl provided so let me click on that link but megan let me give you a little intro to physics and let me click on that link to see if it's even uh going to be related where is that link evaluate the piecewise definition for oh piecewise this is mathematics at the following point five okay so this is uh, more mathematics less physics megan uh the problem i showed wasn't physics i don't think someone i know sent me that but the part of physics i like to know more about is relativity and gravity everything uh really i don't even know where to start i'm gonna give you a little intro to physics uh i'm not gonna do relativity and gravity right now okay but i'm gonna give you a little intro to physics for you to appreciate what physics is, is megan okay small world though could you break down the math behind for me uh um for men fermentation process i don't know it legendary rob boss the fer fermentation process i haven't looked at the mathematics behind it just to start would be awesome okay megan take a look at this thing i'm going to give you an equation okay sweet dreams eh? if you got to go to bed take a look at this thing megan i'm going to give you an equation and this is what physics is okay chicho could probably do some maths on what the odds are of two people being in the same city for a channel for a channel of 33 viewers <laughs> funny take a look at this thing right and by the way megan physics is all about units right so physics physics is all about units okay and what are units units are how we understand a system to be period right so if we're measuring distance in general we say use meters if you're in the united states you use feet right or inches or miles right if we're going to weigh something in general 
you're gonna use uh, kilograms unless you're in the United States and two other countries I believe you're gonna use pounds in Canada we use pounds as well right if you're gonna use volume it's distance cubed right so physics is all about units you need to know your units because your units tell you what that system is about and if you understand the units it means you understand the system okay got it now take a look at this thing i'm going to give you an equation i'm just making up right let's assume a box squared plus three triangles is equal to four diamonds cubed okay that's our system what are the units of boxes well they're boxes triangles are triangles and the units of diamonds are diamonds okay you could think of this as being meters seconds kilometers doesn't make a difference or kilograms right whatever the units are and then I'm gonna tell you the following give you the following word problem this is the equation that relates boxes triangles diamonds together right and I'm gonna give you this following problem two boxes and three triangles are interacting how many diamonds do we get right this this might seem silly what I'm doing right now but just bear with me for a couple more minutes right so two boxes and three triangles are interacting in some kind of physical manner how many diamonds do we get right and I've already explained to you that boxes and diamonds interact uh, boxes and triangles interact with diamonds based on this equation okay so all you got to do to find out how many diamonds you get it's sub in two for box and three for triangle so you end up getting two squared plus three times three is equal to four diamonds cubed two squared is four plus nine is equal to four diamonds cubed 13 is equal to four diamonds cubed divide by four so 13 over four is equal to diamonds cubed and you cube root both sides so diamonds is equal to the cube root of 13 over 4 and the units for that would be diamonds or whatever it is right that's what physics is you get a whole bunch of equations and they give you in a word problem they tell you what certain things are or you do experiments you do readings or you average out a certain data set you have to get an average approximation of whatever variable it is the unit it is that you're looking for and then you plug the stuff into your equation the relationship that you have between all those variables and get an answer right and you can only do that if you understand certain systems okay so for example let's do uh, f equals ma force is equal to mass times acceleration force is equal to mass times acceleration that's Newton's laws right I think it's number two right force is equal to mass times acceleration right what's the units of force in this equation okay there's disclaimers here right you have to understand what force is what's force force the units and units they used to put in square brackets right but I'm gonna write it here let's write it here right so physics is all about units right force to be able to use this equation right to for this equation to be valid force has to be in Newton's mass has to be in meters per second squared uh, sorry mass has to be in kilograms acceleration has to be meters per second squared I remember earlier YouTube video of this <laughs> nice so force the units of force have to be Newtons 
And that's an N. Okay. Mass has to be in kilograms. And acceleration has to be in meters per second squared. Okay. So we would ask, here's a question, right? Uh, a force of 10 newtons accelerates, accelerates an object to 100 uh, kilometers per hour. Let's make this 1,000 newtons, right? So a force of 1,000 newtons, right? 1,000 newtons accelerates an object to 100 kilometers per hour. What's what's the mass of the object? Smudge. What's the mass of the object? Right? Okay. How are you gonna do this? Right? Well, we have an equation that relates force, mass, and acceleration. For us to be able to use this equation, we need the force to be in newtons, we need the mass to be in kilograms, and we need the acceleration to be meters per second. We've been given a problem where they did give us the force in newtons, but they gave us the acceleration in kilometers per hour. So we can't just do this. This would be wrong. If you went, okay, here's an equation that relates mass, uh, force, mass, and acceleration. F is equal to ma then just plug in the number. So 1000 is equal to mass, because that's what we're trying to find, times 100. This would be wrong. Why? Because the acceleration is in the wrong units. Acceleration has to be meters per second squared. So before we do this, okay, we need to convert, ah, Megan, you said 1000 kilograms, but we need to convert 100 kilometers per hour to meters per second. So in physics, there's a lot of unit conversion. Okay. You're trying to calculate a punch or something. We did this, right? We need the neutral measurement. We need the neutral measurement, right? So a huge part of physics is being in the right unit to be able to use the right equation that relates all of your variables together your boxes, triangles, and diamonds, right? So first order of business is converting kilograms, 100, 100 kilograms, ki kilometers per hour to meters, oh, hour squared, by the way, hour squared to meters per second squared. We need to convert kilometers per hour squared to meters per second squared. Okay, so how do we do that? That's just straight up unit conversion, right? Now, if you want to think about it, do it this way. Hours squared means hours times hours, right? So first order of business is convert kilometers to meters. And the way you use unit conversions uh, is a velocity, right? Though. No, it's an acceleration. Kilometers per hour squared. Uh, sorry, I forgot the squared when I wrote the, down the problem. My apologies, right? It acceleration has to be distance over time squared. Okay, so that had to be kilometers per hour squared. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is convert here. I'm going to turn on chat again so everybody sees all the different types of questions coming up. Okay, velocity is a vector, velocity is a vector, acceleration is a vector, right? It's 1000. Uh, kilometers in one megameter one one megameter I guess so <laughs> so 1,000 meters per kilometer right so if you're gonna multiply this out this is just straight up fractions I think I think the two is in, in the sentence is throwing me off to uh, all an object to 
Uh, no, that works. Excel accelerates an object to. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, accelerates an object. Oh, yes, I wrote this down wrong. The wording is horrendous. My and this is why some books are brutal, right? Uh, a force of 1000 newtons uh, is accelerated, is accelerated. Uh, da, 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 da. A force of 1000 newtons is accelerated. Uh, Oh, how do we word this? I'm going to reword the problem so it works. Uh, Bitstorm, thank you for pointing this out, right? A force of 1,000 newtons. Uh, uh, two is wrong. So what's the easiest way to do this? My English sucks, by the way. See this? Physics is awesome. It's so interesting. <laughs> because accelerated at one. Uh, accelerate is accelerated at. That's right. At. Uh, oh, no. A for, 1000 newtons accelerates an object at that's right so i gotta just change this to at at 100 kilometers per hour squared thank you correct my english gang if i make stupid mistakes like this visually interesting i'm really bad at this stuff so hopefully this isn't a silly question but why do we use kilograms but not uh kilometers why does it need to convert to just meters uh, it's a standard unit right it's the standard units of measurement that we use and what is newtons by the way check this out newtons is just kilograms times meters per second squared so just imagine if Newton at the time decided that acceleration was going to be measured at kilometers per hour squared then the Newton one Newton would have been kilograms meet kilometers per hour squared so it's just convention okay and the reason they use this convention is because in general it works out well okay just see the numbers the words cannot be calculated just see the numbers all the god says i don't know it's been a while for me right that's why visually interesting okay so newton and newton is equal to kilograms times meters per second squared that's just a convention that we have okay and the whole world and they call this si units uh standard international units or whatever it stands for right so for us to convert kilometers per hour squared to meters per second squared we've got to get rid of kilometers first so you're going to put kilometers here right and how are we going to convert kilometers to meters we want meters up top you're going to go one kilometer is equal to 1000 meters so kilometer kills kilometer we got meters up top that's the unit we wanted congratulations we got the right unit in the top we got to kill hours squared how are we going to convert hours to seconds okay we need hour up here right an hour i don't usually go directly to seconds i go from hour to minutes so minute right so one hour is 60 minutes right but this is hours squared right so we don't need just one hour over 60 minutes we need two of these guys so all i'm going to do is i'm going to square this right and this becomes hour squared minute squared in the bottom so the hour squared kills the hour squared but then we have minutes squared in the bottom and we want seconds squared so we're going to put minutes here and we're going to convert minutes to second one minute is equal to 60 seconds but we don't need to just kill minutes we need to kill minutes squared so we're going to square this guy as well squared okay for college this week and really nervous cd rom don't be nervous okay go into it do your best study your hardest and go into an exam knowing that you're trying your best that's what you should do the only time well nervousness does come in if it's important and whatnot but if you work really hard really don't procrastinate and use your time efficiently and study as hard as you can 
that should eliminate a lot of the anxiety for people when you go and write a test because a test is really just saying man show us what you know you great so for sosus thank you very much for the bits okay megan i think i can s say my brain is humming right now laugh a lot in a good way awesome megan right so we got to multiply this out to be able to get our meters per second squared right 100 times 1000 you just add two zeros at the bottom right so all of this here's an equal sign equals here's our 1000 i'm going to add two more zeros right so that's a hundred thousand up top divided by 60 squared times 60 squared that's going to give us meters per seconds squared okay make sense you're just converting from 100 kilometers per hour squared to meters per seconds squared now i can i can simplify this a little bit right that's 100,000 over 60 squared is 3600 60 squared is 3600 meters per second squared two zeros kills two zeros two zeros kills two zeros what's 36 times 36 i don't know what 36 times 36 is this seems pretty small but it is what it is right it does seem pretty small but it is what it is it is slowly starting to click awesome all right so i'm just going to do this i'm not even going to bother using a calculator so the force if we're going to sub stuff in because we can now sub it in actually let's convert it let's do this 36 times 36 36 times 36 one two six nine one over one two no nine six nine six meters per second square that's really slow did we do this correctly i think so yeah pretty slow right need a calculator bot <laughs> thank you i'm gonna give it my best shot okay cd rom good luck by the way so what we want to do is calculate the mass of the object now we can use this formula force is equal to mass times acceleration everything is in the right units so the force was was uh, 1000 is equal to mass times 1 over 1296 right you don't have to put the units in you already have the units calculated you know everything is in the right units solve for m you just multiply everything again it's a fraction of the denominator cross multiply this up really if you want this is really 1000 is equal to m over 1296 take this kick it up right so the mass is wow it is what it is the mass is one two nine six one two three kilograms what did we do something wrong gang a force of 1000 newtons accelerates an object at 100 kilometers per hour squared what's the mass of the object the mass of the object is 1,296,000 kilograms it's 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 oh it's 10 i killed too many zeros 10 thank you so we eliminate one raptor mint nice thank you for that so this is going to be 10 here this is going to be 10 and then we're going to divide by 10 so this was 10 let's kill the kilograms here we're not there yet divide by 10 but still it seems like a lot to me so one zero kills one zero so one two nine six zero zero kilograms so the mass of the object is one hundred twenty nine thousand six hundred kilograms right something is wrong i make little mistakes gang my apologies when i look here and i look there i sometimes drop a zero see it 
I dropped this zero. Oops. When you're doing problems, look at the problem. Don't let your eyes wander. Okay. Your trigonometry videos from some years ago helped me a lot when trying to learn that in school. Awesome zone. Glad to hear. Now correct. Awesome. Thank you very much for the uh, correction, by the way. Okay. That this is the general gist of physics. Okay. Really? This is the general gist of physics. Should we do trig? Let's do trig for our closing. Okay. By the way, gang, thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subs. Apologies if I'm not catching it. I'm sort of trying to keep my eyes on the problem so I don't make any silly mistakes. Right. Megan, I hope this helped, by the way. Okay. Now, trigonometry. Watch this. Let's talk about right angle triangles for now. 129 tons, 129 tons. It looks complicated, but you, when you break it down, it's not. It, that's what physics is. You just have to understand the system at play and the units at play. Heavy, heavy. <laughs> Take a look at this thing. Triangles. Let's deal with right angle triangles for now. And a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about applies to general triangles, but just simplicity right now since we're doing trig let's talk about right angle triangles okay right angles means this line and that line are crossing at 90 degrees now take a look at this thing first thing to know about triangles there's six pieces of information in a triangle there's three sides and three angles right in general in my part of the world, the angles they write as capital letters and the size they write as small case letters, right? So let's assume this is angle A. When they put it at the point, that's the angle they're talking about. Angle B and angle C, right? So angle C is 90 degrees. Now take a look at this thing. Here's a triangle. Apologies about logos and stuff. I don't promote any products, but it is what I'm using, right? So take a look at this thing. Let's assume is this is a right angle triangle. I don't know. Let's assume here's a right angle triangle, right? I'm going to decrease this angle, right? I'm decreasing this angle here. The side that decreases is this, right? If I increase this angle, the side that increases is this and vice versa. And the other way around, if I decrease this angle up here, you're going to see this side decreasing. So an angle controls the opposite side in a triangle, right? Important, not the opposite angle, but the opposite side. So this angle here controls this side. And the way we make that connection, because they're linked up, we say, that this is side a small case letters for the sides this angle here controls this side b and this angle here controls this side c okay an angle in a triangle controls the opposite side of a triangle okay that should be clear right if you change an angle this side gets smaller or whatnot right now couple of relationships you need to know the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees that's absolute on a plane euclidean geometry which is map flat surface right so equation number one is sum of angles that's like angles short version of triangle equals 180 degrees so for example if i give you the following if i say this is 110 degrees and this is 30 degrees what's this angle right here's a question mark what's this angle well the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees so add up those two 110 plus 30 is equal to 140 and this plus this plus this has to equal 180 so all you do is go 180 minus 140 is 40. 
so this angle is 40. You can do that with any triangle, which is on a flat surface, right? So this angle plus this angle plus that angle is equal to 180 degrees, right? Another way you could write this is A plus B plus C is equal to 180, right? A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees, okay? The other relationship you have are you a teacher, lecturer in math or physics? I, I teach privately both math and physics, was on. Okay. The other relationship we have is a Pythagorean theorem, too. The relationship is this. This side squared plus this side squared is this side squared, and that only works for right angle triangles. There has to be a 90 degree angle, right? They have to be perpendicular. That's what right angle means. Right? So four right angle triangles right angle triangles a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared right this side squared plus that side squared is equal to that side squared that's just the relationship we have right visually it means this here if i say this is a square right and this side is three what's the area of the square Right? Area of the square is this times this. Damn, I'm late. Hello, Danjicho. Perceval do growl. <laughs> hello, hello. Okay, nice. Right? This is going to be nine because for a square, right? The area is this times this, right? And if they're the same, if this was x, then this would be x squared, the area, right? Well, this relationship here says this for a right angle triangle. If this is A, B, and C, A squared would just be A times A. This would be A. So this area, B would be B times B, has to be equal to C times C. Right? So this square plus that square equals that square, and my drawings are not to scale if this is 90 degrees. Okay, that's another relationship we have. We also have three other relationships. Okay, the relationships are this. Sine of an angle, theta, is equal to the opposite side, opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cos of an angle is equal to adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Tan of an angle is equal to opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Okay. They call this the trig ratios because ratios are just fractions, right? One thing divided by another thing. It's a comparison. A ratio is a comparison. Think about it that way, right? So sine of an angle, right? For a right angle triangle, it has to be a right angle triangle. So sine of A of an angle is the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is the side across from the 90 degrees. In this drawing, it's C, right? So sine of an angle, right? It's just a relationship, standard is the opposite side, the side that it controls, divided by the hypotenuse. Cos of an angle is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Now, adjacent to angle A is both this side and this side, but this side already has a name. It's called the hypotenuse. So we don't call this the adjacent side. We call this the adjacent side, okay? So cos of an angle is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Tan of an angle is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Okay. This holds true for any triangles that are congruent, which are identical. So for example, if I give this to you, here's two triangles, right? I'm gonna say this is 30 degrees. If this is 30 degrees and that's 90 degrees, what's the angle here? Well, this plus this has to equal 180 right 90 plus 30 is 120 120 minus 
180 is 60 degrees. So this is 60 degrees. Okay. So let's assume we have the following legitimate triangle for this with the links being the following. Okay. One square root of three and two. And square root of three is just a number, right? If you punch in square root of three in your calculator, you're going to get one point something something, right? So let's assume this triangle exists, and it does, right? This is one of the special triangles you have to learn. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you another triangle, and I'm going to say, hey, the angles for this triangle are the same as those tri that triangle up there. However, this is a bigger version of that triangle. This is a little version of this, right? And I'm gonna say this side is five, right? And I want you to find X and Y. I want you to find these two sides. Well, according to our trig ratios, sine, cos, and tan of an angle is the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, adjacent divided by hypotenuse, opposite divided by adjacent, right? So take a look at this. For this triangle, we have sine of 30, let's use sine, right? So we're gonna go for this triangle, sine of 30 degrees is equal to, is equal to what? The opposite side divided by hypotenuse. So opposite of 30 is 1, and the hypotenuse is 2, is 1 over 2. Okay. Take a look at this triangle. This triangle also has a 30 degrees. So sine of 30 degrees here is the opposite side, 5, divided by the hypotenuse, which is y, right? 30 degrees. This says sine of 30 is 1 over 2. This guy says sine of 30 is 5 over y. They're both sine of 30s, right? If they're both sine of 30, then if sine of 30 is 1 over 2, then this sine of 30 is also 1 over 2, right? So you can just substitute this for this because that's sine of 30. So 1 over 2 is equal to 5 over y. Oops, 5 over y right i'm going to bring it here one over two is equal to five over y so if you want to solve for y cross multiply this baby up so one times y is y two times five is ten. Oh, look we just solve for y that's ten because the sine of an angle is always going to be the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse it's a standard for a right angle triangle no matter how large or how small that triangle is if it's a right angle triangle the sine of 30 degrees is always going to be one over two i don't care what size that triangle is right does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. And when you take your calculator, take your calculator and punch in one divided by two, which is 0.5, and then take the sine of it, the inverse sine of it. Oh, we don't want to do that. Take the inverse sine of that thing, you're going to get the angle. Okay. One thing I struggled with when I studied this was that I didn't understand that this only goes for right angle triangle yeah it has to be right angle triangles these three things are only valid for right angle triangles okay that's your basic general intro to trig and if you want to more on this um i do have a trick playlist and i made some trick videos a long time ago uh, back in 2008 or something basic stuff that builds on top of this this should give you a nice understanding of what's going on and there's one th other thing we have here here let me erase this I'm gonna erase these guys okay so let's take these guys down take a look
there are times when you want to get the angle by itself where you have two sides, right? Right angle triangle. Here's angle theta. Let's assume this is six and this is seven, right? Stilic, thanks for going through it. We're about, uh, is this video going uh, to get uploaded? This video is going to be uploaded in about, uh, not tomorrow, uh, tomorrow? No, the next day most likely. So today is Tuesday. Most likely Thursday it'll be up on YouTube and BitChute. And you should be able to watch it on Twitch for the next two weeks. Okay. Mass Math is Discord. Where can I see that play? The playlist you can find here. Here, if you go to YouTube channel, my YouTube channel. Okay. I have a trigonometry playlist. Okay. And in the bottom of the trick playlist, the first part of the trick playlist is more Greek 12 mathematics. And then I linked up the earlier stuff I did, which was the basic trigonometry in the bottom of that playlist. You can also go to the language of mathematics playlist. Let me bring it up. Let me bring this up. I'll give you the link to the language of mathematics playlist because it's some of the early videos that I put out. Okay. Uh, let me get that playlist for you. Language of mathematics. And there's a table of contents that I have on my main page uh, ba -ba -da 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 -da. and this is in reverse order main how many videos here 161 and trigonometry trigonometry it starts off with language of mathematics uh, introduction to trigonometry and so language of mathematics 14 and 15 this is the 14th math video I put up and I put this up in 2007 Wow, 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 wow. Here's introduction to trigonometry, but it's more of an introduction to geometry. And here is the first sort of video on uh, right angle triangles where we do the intro and then you can continue to work from there. Uh, follow the work from there. Okay. And my table of contents is uh, here. Where is it? Let me bring this up. I'll give you the link. Uh, it's on Blockspot right now. Math. Where's my math? Math. And if you go to language of mathematics, you want to take a look at series one, video number 14 uh, and up. And here's a table of contents for those videos. Okay. I hope that gets you to where you want to go. Now take a look at this thing. If you want to find the angle, you can still use the ratio, right? You have the opposite side and you have the hypotenuse. So you look at this, you go opposite of hypotenuse, you got it here. So you can go sine of angle theta is opposite over hypotenuse, six over seven. And to get theta by itself, what you got to do, 2007, the year math was revitalized. <laughs> My pleasure, Oz999. To get theta by itself, this doesn't mean sine times theta, it means sine of theta. To isolate theta, you do something called sine inverse of 6 over 7. And that button, sine to the power of negative 1, but it's not really to the power of negative 1, sine inverse of 6 over 7, you can go 6 divided by 7 and then take the sine inverse of it, it'll spit out the angle, right? Gina, how you doing? Hey, Chicho and chat. The three squared and four squared equals five squared always works while well uh, for Pythagorean calculations. Yeah, indeed. It's called a, uh, what's it called? Pythagorean, uh, oh, I forgot what it's called. Uh, oh, there's a word for it. The Pythagorean, Oh, I forget the word in English. Pythagorean? It's Pythagorean, but there's a special word for uh, perfect Pythagoreans. Uh, Pythagorean theorem, for sure. But they call it perfect Pythagoreans, like 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared, right? And I think, um, what's the other one? Uh, da -da -da, 12, uh, 5, 12, and uh, 13. 
Uh, anyway, it's the English words trying to explain mathematical concepts. Uh, triple, yeah, Pythagorean triples, I think. Perfect triples, Pythagorean perfect triples or something like this. Uh, crafter, I think that's correct, if I recall. Fun. Gang, should we call the stream? What is the shortest distance to your heart? <laughs> Randy and Choco one. What's the shortest distance to my heart? Mm, I don't know. I don't know if there's a shortest distance. Cornelian cherry jam I made this morning. Very yummy. Take a look. I picked these uh, yesterday. <laughs> probably pickles <laughs> probably pickles sure says. very yummy Gina a, a straight line Megan I'm sorry to break this into the math but did I miss the movie suggestions and stuff or oh, the movie stream mm hmm just four movies we've got to watch um, what are they? Breakfast Club, Tombstone, El Topo, and Forbidden Planet. And most likely our movie stream is gonna be in the next set. It's called uh, Cornelian Cherries. It's tart. It's not really cherries, it's I guess it's the same family as cherries, maybe. That's why they call it Cornelian and cherries. Um, but it's very tart. They have a nice night. Thanks. I made a whole bunch of jars. I, uh, I converted uh, about eight pounds into jam this morning. Very excited for it. The shortest distance from one point to another point is always a straight line. Wing Chun. Yay. They're berries, right? Uh, yeah they call them cornean chairs so they must be berries they're they got the fruit and then the seed on the inside all right solid one seed delicacy in iran good for the tummy if people have colds and stuff like this we eat that so i i always try to always have a jar of that in the house minimum so if we get to the last jar we don't crack it open sort of we use it as medicine yeah very good megan very good young polax it's not like to make for him myself is some mozzarella and dribble some oil on it and finish it off with pepper and salt Ooh, nice young bolax delicious no carbs no crackers or bread gang let's call the stream thank you for the questions we did fantastic math today by the way gang awesome we covered three topics which was really good there was a whole bunch of people that were subbing gang thank you for the subs we're going to be doing anywhere between two to four of these a month. So you're welcome to pop in and we'll be doing a lot more of these. Okay. I feel that you appreciate science. I try to. Great stream. Uncharted days. Good to, good to have you back, man. As always, as always. Gang, I'm on Patreon. If you want to support this work, Patreon is a fantastic way to support this project. Patreon.com forward slash Chicho. C-H-Y-C-H-O. I do have sort of my thesis set up there where you can see what I've created since 2007, creating the math videos and everything that I'm doing is really layered on mathematics. We've got about a thousand videos on YouTube and at least four or 500 of those are mathematics. The rest of them, at least another 200 or so are layered directly on top of the mathematics, right? Because with math, you're a free human being if you're literate in the language of mathematics. Uh, so this my first time here randy thanks for dropping in and thank you for the sub if you subbed or followed and whatnot right so if you want to support this work patreon is a great way to support this project i don't put anything behind paywalls everything's creative commons share and share alike okay we are live streaming on twitch if you want to participate in the chat as it's happening twitch is where you want to be at and again gang mods thank you for taking care of business Thank you for the follows thank you for the subs thank you for the bits okay and this is because of the support we're getting from twitch and patreon and 
in different platforms uh, YouTube uh, membership and direct donation and stuff like this we're able to do this work and grow I do announce these live streams on Elo Minds VK Parlor uh, Gap and Twitter and we do share additional content and all the links will be in the description of the video Randy thank you very much for the tier one sub appreciate it a lot for live streams we don't have any visuals we do upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o as podcasts as people have requested for them to be available okay and we will be uploading this video to youtube and bitshoot it will make it past the centers on youtube and everything goes on bitshoot and if you are on bitshoot and youtube you can support this work by subscribing following turning on notifications youtube doesn't send notifications out all the time but bitshoot does right and if you're on youtube you can support this work by joining youtube membership gang thank you very much for the questions for the participation thank you for paying attention and uh, we got another five streams coming up in the next five days three of those are me showing you my gaming collection if we go through it in two days we'll talk about comic books okay and i might do a comic book unannounced live stream sometime either tomorrow or next day uh, we'll see how it goes gang i hope you guys have a fantastic day and i'll see you tomorrow if you can make it i'm going to bring the boxes down in the living room and we're going to go through some of the games that have made it with me for the last 40 years both PC and console games. Bye, everyone.